everyone, I'm Kelly. And I'm Olivia, and we're from the Smithsonian Marine Station in Fort Pierce, Florida. We're from the Coral Health and Marine Probiotics Lab, also known as the CHAMP Lab, and we're here for our fourth and final video of our science series. We wanted to take the time to connect with you virtually to introduce you to some facts about corals. If you haven't done so yet, please take a look at our previous videos that address the importance of corals, coral anatomy, and the stony coral tissue loss disease. You can find those links in the description below. But today, we have the pleasure of introducing CHAMP Lab member, Yes Marie. Hi, Yes Marie. Hey guys, my name is Yes Marie de la Flor and I'm a microbiology technician here at the Smithsonian Marine Station. Today, we're gonna to be discussing bacteria. Yes, bacteria has a lot to do with coral. And in our lab, we research the bacteria that live on coral. In fact, we're optimistic about using this bacteria to treat corals with stony coral tissue loss disease. So let's dive in. So let's start at the beginning. What are bacteria? Bacteria are single-celled organisms. They're called microorganisms because they're really tiny, microscope tiny. Even a single grain of sand is still 50 times the size of a bacterium. And these organisms thrive in many environments. They're found everywhere, and we mean everywhere, including soil, the ocean, the atmosphere, inside of us, you name it. Did you know that there is so much bacteria in the ocean that you can find tens of thousands of them in just one spoonful of seawater? Even though we often think bacteria are bad and gross and they're the reason why we have to wash our hands all the time or why cuts can get infected sometimes, there are actually good bacteria too. Wait, so bacteria can be good? That's right. Most bacteria will neither help nor hurt you and you may not even notice that they're there. But even though you may not notice bacteria, they can have a huge impact on living organisms. Corals also have a large variety of microorganisms living in and on them. This collection is called the microflora. You also have a microflora in your skin and in your digestive tract. The coral microflora can be a complex mixture of different types of microorganisms, but today we're going to be focusing only on the bacterial part of it. There's a lot that we still don't understand about the coral's microflora, but research suggests that microflora provide a variety of benefits to the coral host. They can provide nutrients and vitamins to corals, metabolize dangerous waste products, and may help modulate the coral immune system like they do in humans. Bacteria living on the coral can prevent harmful bacteria from moving in by outcompeting them for space and resources. Some bacteria in the microflora produce antibacterial compounds that can actually kill other harmful bacteria that try to live on the coral. You've probably seen commercials for that kind of stuff for humans. Yes, for yogurt and dietary supplements. These beneficial bacteria are called probiotics, but their uses go far beyond food. Because probiotics can colonize a host and provide protection from harmful bacteria, the CHAMP lab aims to use probiotics as a potential treatment for stony coral tissue loss disease. To do this, we have taken samples from corals that are more resistant to the disease and grow single strains of beneficial bacteria from these corals. We think there is something about these corals' microflora that gives them protection against the disease. We select for probiotics that produce antibacterial compounds that kill potentially disease-causing bacteria. So far, we have found over a thousand bacterial strains that we are testing for antibacterial activity. Our goal is to find as many as the good guys as we can, round them up to help the diseased coral. So here's how we test if our probiotics work in the lab. We keep small pieces or fragments of diseased coral in their own individual tanks with seawater and aeration. We then add the probiotic bacteria directly to the coral and then watch to see if the disease progresses on the coral over a few weeks. The CHAMP lab has found that one of our probiotic bacteria actually stops the disease from progressing on most of the corals treated. Disease slowed on another third of these fragments. Now this is exciting stuff, 
But what's really cool is that we can actually prevent healthy corals from becoming infected as well. So the probiotics are working. Results in the laboratory seem promising, but the most important question is, will these probiotics work on wild corals in the ocean? Probiotics have never been used on organisms on a coral reef before, so we had to get pretty creative to figure out how to do that. First, we have to grow the probiotic bacteria so that there's enough to cover each coral colony being treated. We mix it into seawater just like the ocean environment we'll be using them in. We then load the probiotic into plastic syringes like turkey basters, which we use to apply the treatments in the field. Then comes the really fun part, the field work. When we went out in January of 2020, it was the first time that we used our experimental treatment to apply to corals along the Florida reef track. We scuba dive to look for infected corals, specifically ones that are close to each other so that we can treat a bunch at one time. We then cover our coral in a special bag. We developed these methodologies and created all the bags by hand. And then we empty the syringe up into the bag to fill it with our probiotic treatment. The bag keeps the probiotics concentrated over the infected coral, and we leave the bag there for two hours to allow the bacteria to grow on the coral before we bring the bag back to the boat. Our goal is that the probiotics will outcompete the bad bacteria that may be involved in the disease so that the disease stops killing the healthy tissue on the coral. In the future, we'll also do experiments to see how well the probiotics prevent the healthy corals in that area from becoming infected. We're also working on other ways of delivering our probiotics to our coral, like this toothpaste-like mixture that can be applied directly to the coral lesion. Or these jelly-like beads that keep the probiotics concentrated and slowly release them to the lesion over time. Or we can soak the food that the coral eats in probiotics so that the bacteria can colonize the inside of the coral when it eats the food. So we know that was probably a lot to take in at once. So to recap, not all bacteria are bad and probiotics are good bacteria. For corals, probiotics can be helpful in treating stony coral tissue loss disease, as well as protecting healthy corals from getting infected. And we're looking forward to seeing how well our first experimental treatments of probiotics worked on wild corals in the field, since our laboratory experiments showed that our probiotics could slow or stop the disease from progressing on infected corals. All of this adds up to some really potentially promising solutions to help save Florida's corals, as well as other Caribbean reefs that are also now being affected by stony coral tissue loss disease. And all of this from tiny bacteria. It's pretty powerful stuff. Well, everyone, that's a wrap for our Coral Health Science Series. Thank you so much for joining us to learn a little bit more about corals and what the CHAMP Lab is doing to protect them. Be sure to check out the other videos in our science series, as well as great educational resources on the Smithsonian Marine Station's website and YouTube channel. And if you'd like to continue along with the CHAMP Lab's research, be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at Paula Protectors. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Bye.